All right, let me get a couple of quick thoughts from you. The January 6th hearing this week. Uh, You know, as we discussed, I think, last week, this is just a play to ruin Donald Trump's reputation even further so he can't run again um, next time around and to put the uh, Republican Party on the defensive for the 2022 midterms. So if you look at the composition of the of the committee, it's a farce. So why would I I don't even pay attention to it right now? I, I mean, it's ridiculous. This week. Every little girl in America has a new icon and hero. Simone Biles comments. I don't have any comments on Miss Biles because I don't know what her situation is. And I think it's unfair commentators like me and you to, uh, you know, give analysis on something. We just don't know what the woman's mental... One hundred percent. So I think we should all be compassionate. I I think that's the right way to go there. Okay, so I agree with you. However, I would add this because w- the story broke while I was on the air, and I said, "Please don't bash her. Please don't bash yeah. her." Remember, she went through horrid experiences. So I I agree with you one hundred percent. But I'd like to add, but that does not make her a hero or what she did heroic. It makes it understandable. But it doesn't make quitting does not make you a hero. I can understand. I can have compassion. And it might have been the right thing for her to do. And I'm not going to judge it. But when the press comes out and everybody says, oh, she's so brave and heroic. We used to think when Nancy Kerrigan was was clubbed in the legs with with a pipe and yet she went out and skated anyway, we thought that was something to aspire to not to get there and then quit and a- well, again I, is, I don't blame her i'm just saying no. the reaction from the press making that in heroics is the wrong message and here's an observation if miss biles uh, was a conservative woman uh, that reaction would not be that way from the press oh uh, yeah i sadly i agree um uh, Governor Cuomo coming out this week saying, I never lied. And that's why Justice Department is uh, da, saying that uh, they're not going to do any more investigation. You know, uh, if anyone believes that politics doesn't influence um, law and order in this country, then they're living in, in the land of Oz. So, so le- Cuomo is going to go down to his grave saying, I never did anything wrong. No matter what evidence is presented, what the situation is, that's what narcissists do. Okay? Hmm. They never do anything wrong, no matter what the situation or the evidence is. And that's it. You can tie up Andrew Cuomo in a narcissist bow, and there you go. Biden Justice Department is dropping the charges on the Chinese military spies that were arrested here in America. Comment? The Biden Justice Department does not want any problem with China, nor does President Biden himself. So no matter what China does short of invading Taiwan, you're going to have a passive response to it. It's, it, it is clear that President Biden is so weak that he is not able to confront anything. And I want to make one, uh, and this is an important point about the COVID discussion we had in the first half hour that I hope people heard and will go to your website and my website, BillOReilly.com, to listen to because I do post these conversations. President Trump was brought down by COVID. He lost because of COVID. If COVID had not appeared, he would have won re-election because mm-hmm. of the economy was strong. Biden's mm-hmm. going to lose re-election because of COVID. People are not going to forget what they heard and saw this week. They saw a president who could not put out a cogent, intelligent, fact-based message. He couldn't do it. Incapable of doing it. 
And that has caused so many unintended consequences, so much angst, so much bitterness. People will remember that. So ironically, both Trump and Biden are one-termers because of COVID. All right. So let me ask you this. You have Kamala Harris. And I honestly don't think that Joe Biden is going to make it uh, through his old his whole term. I'm not saying that he's going to die. I'm just saying he is so clearly affected. Uh, when I saw him with the Iraqi prime minister this week, I, I, I just tried to put myself in the shoes and listening to him. I tried to put myself in the shoes of the prime minister. And I thought if I were sitting in that room next to him, I think this guy has no idea what we're really talking this guy's not in charge of his faculties so i don't think he's going to make it his full term but i can't imagine uh, kamala harris being the president no one even her own party no one wanted her as vice president no one who's going to want her as president i see it differently from you as uh sometimes happens I think that Joe Biden will, unless he is uh, physically impaired, make it for four years because that's what the progressive movement wants. They don't want anyone running the country who has any original thoughts or problem solving skills. I mean, I'm sure you saw the five pillars of the border that came out uh, from Vice President Harris's office. I mean, it was like a third grader. And I'm not I'm not I'm sorry to demean third graders. It was like something coming out of Miss Crabtree's class in third grade. Oh, we're going to solve all the corruption problems in Central America and Mexico. Uh huh. Sure you are. We you know, we sent. Kind of, right. Go ahead. The, the progressives don't want to solve the border problem. Beck. They don't want to solve it. They want an open border where anyone can come to the United States because mm-hmm. the progressives believe that will lead to socialism. That's what they right. want. Have a guy I know, and which there. is a perfect reason why Cuba, we've sent 50 people back to Cuba. We're sending them back. These are the people we should be welcoming, but they generally yeah, but don't violence. support the socialist and democratic policies, and they don't vote for Democrats, generally speaking. And that's, I think, why they're sending him back. And it is, it's an abomination. The, Biden is basically a pimp. He is pimping children from the from the uh, from South America and from Mexico. He's letting them come over. They are being pimped out. The cartels are getting uh, uh, rich off it. He doesn't give a flying crap about any of that. Nor do anyone in the progressive movement. It's all about power. It's not about stopping the corruption of the cartels. It's not about uh, making sure that family, women, and children are safe from monsters. Are protected, obviously. But if you're George Soros, because he's the big money man on this progressive socialist movement, if you're Soros and his minions, and believe me, they are very well organized and well funded, who do you want as president? You want you want Biden. Joe Biden. Because Biden Yeah, Joe is Biden was a, to... Joe Biden was the perfect Trojan horse. Yes. So he's not going to he's not going to be removed. He's not going to leave. The progressives and and the media, corporate media will, will support him to the end because he's not going to solve one single problem. Nothing. He's not going to uh, solve violent crime. He's going to surround gun stores. Oh, okay. He's not going to solve the border. He's not going to solve inflation. And Soros and the progressives want the economy to tank because when the economy tanks, the federal government has to run in, move in and run the economy, which is what socialism is. So this is all very logical. Biden is the perfect guy for the progressive movement. And and it's so clear to me what is happening. And it's infuriating to me. And I just wonder how many of the 80 million plus Americans who pull the lever for Joe Biden are regretting it now. Even if you despise and hate Donald Trump, do you not see the destruction where we're headed here? Do you not see the dead people in the streets of our major cities? Do you not see millions of foreign nationals 
coming into the United States, many of whom have COVID? Do you not acknowledge any of that? 